Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today, an extremely fascinating video. We're gonna watch Food Habits of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by a rational believer. Yet again, if you're new to this channel, you do not know that I explored the field of nutrition extensively. I can say with confidence that I tried every single diet there is on this planet. Keto carnivore diet, primal, low carb, high carb, vegan, raw vegan, and what not. I did it all. And therefore now I'm in a place where I'm of the firm conviction that we need animal foods to thrive. A predominantly animal-based diet is the healthiest for me personally. And I make the argument that we as human beings do need animal foods, quality animal foods, to be optimally healthy. I do not believe in restricting restricting meats, organs, etc. for the sake of introducing more plants into our diet. However, nowadays, no, I do not eat an exclusive meat-based diet any longer. Back in the day, yes, I ate only meat, nothing else, no plant matter whatsoever, and that diet was great as well for a period of time. Nowadays, I do eat meats and plants, but nevertheless, predominantly animal foods. Anyways, the intro is long enough as it is. I'm very curious to find out what what the Prophet Muhammad recommended for food. With no further ado, let's have a look. If you want to be healthy and live healthy, follow the diet and the sleeping pattern of Rasulullah True. Aisha anha says, Never for two days in a row, never for two consecutive days did the Prophet ﷺ ever eat barley. Good. That's very good. Mainly if you look into the agricultural revolution of our society, if you look into what has happened since we introduced plants on a mass scale, since we introduced so many grains into our diet, this is when tooth decay started. A great book on this would be Weston A. Price, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. I highly recommend you to look into this, how those grains actually damage our teeth and with that our overall health. So therefore, this a great advice to never eat barley every single day. It's barley. That's good. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he, if he would eat all this talk about carbs and protein, so if any carbs he would eat, he would be barley. Right. But even then, on occasions. Good. The Prophet sallallahu was a very organic eater, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He ate dates, he nice. drank water, he drank fresh milk, he was a person who would enjoy the luxuries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nice. On that note, the dates are carbs as well. So it's not only the barley that brings you carbs, but the dates are great carb sources because they bring glucose into your bloodstream. Fantastic quick burst of energy. And on top of that, they come with essential minerals. This is something that you will lose, especially in the desert, sweating all the time. So the dates are a great carb source in this context and way better than the barley. He loved a tharid, which it was a meat filled dish on buttered bread with broth. He used to love the excessive amount of soup. Some okay. of his favorite vegetables were things like pumpkin and um, cucumber, a hadith Good. that mentioned watermelon. Good. He loved meat. Very good. But that's no reason for excessive consumption. Because Aisha radiallahu anha relates that the Prophet It's very good. All that he listed there, the watermelon, the cucumbers, all of this is fruit and all of this is hydrating to the body. So not only in a desert context, in general, this fantastic to hydrate the body, a fantastic source of minerals, etc. you name it. And in combination with meat, you're really on a good path. This is a way to improve your health dramatically. Just give it a go. Try the meat and fruit diet. Cut out the grains, cut out the refined foods, and simply eat fruits and meat. You're going to be surprised how healthy you get. وسلم, as well as they, the family, would only occasionally and rarely receive meat. In one hadith of Bukhari, she says, 
for two whole months, for two whole months, the fire in the hearth of the home of the Messenger of Allah would not be lit because there was no solid food to cook. For two whole months. All our food was dates and water for two months and occasionally we would receive a gift of milk. All right, this comes from a time of poverty, apparently, a time where they didn't have much food and throughout those days they survived on dates, water and milk. Of course, this would be not optimal in the long run. So I would rather look into the dietary advice prior to this, where we heard about fruits, meats, etc. That's why when they would have meat, Prophet Sallallahu loved meat, but Aisha radiallahu anha herself explains in one hadith that he would only occasionally come to them. This is why he left me. So in this hadith, Aisha radiallahu anha says, Never did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam eat his fill from barley for two consecutive days until the day he left this world. The Prophet sallallahu wasn't a person who would gorge. He wasn't a person who would chug. He was a person who would sip. He was a person who taught us to breathe in between our sips of water. That when we ate, that we would eat a third, a third, and a third. A third for food, a third for our drink, and a third for our air and breathing. He was a person who was a healthy eater. He never ate alone. And that's a really important thing. He was very social in his eating. There's no hadith where you ever hear that at any time he ever had a meal that wasn't shared with others. He ate Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his hands, not just because there weren't utensils, there were hadith where he ate with utensils, but because his hands, it limited the kind of quality. He taught us not to blow on our food, not to be so greedy that we can't wait until it cools down a little bit Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He taught us that the person who serves others should be the last to eat. And therefore it was an honor to make sure that everyone was well fed and watered before a person considered their own needs. At the same time, if you're eating in a social setting and everybody eats the same like this, you won't over or under eat. So like this, you can keep healthy eating patterns. There were times where the Prophet ﷺ taught us to restrict food and he would fast every Monday and Thursday, the 13th, 14th and 15th of every lunar calendar. And of course the month of Ramadan and other special days like Ashura, in the month of Muharram. Uh, you know, the holistic approach of the Prophet ﷺ is really what is key. The Prophet ﷺ was a person who taught us that food is one of the primary reasons for illness sure. if we eat too much of it or if yeah. we eat the wrong, the wrong types. None of the hadith related by other Sahaba عنهم, never did the Prophet ﷺ fill his stomach. Never did he eat to his fill from barley or for meat, from meat, unless he was a guest with other people. So if he was eating with other people as a guest, then maybe he would eat a bit more. But normally he would never eat to his fill. Uh, I'll give you uh, three important verses that are of benefit that you can see reflected in the level of the Prophet Allah says, Kulu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu. Eat and drink, but don't be excessive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've made the night a place of repose and rest and your daytime a place of activity. And therefore eating at night wasn't in the habit of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu That was something from the active part of our day. And third and most importantly, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, I've created out of water every living thing. You and I, we need to drink much more water. The Prophet Sallallahu in the authentic hadith, he said, One day you'll be questioned about the, the excessive uh, joys of life, the bounties of life. And he said, One of those joys that he relishes is a drink of cold water on a hot day. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Very surprising to me personally. I expected much more grains. If we look at the time of Jesus, or at least from what we hear of the Bible, is that they were breaking bread. So they were eating bread apparently quite often. Of course, the bread in that day and age looked very different from the bread that we have nowadays. It was fermented in most instances, a much healthier food in comparison to the white bread that we have nowadays. Nevertheless, that being said, looking at the Prophet's diet, 
right here, I have to say that it is extremely healthy because in order to function perfectly, most of us need all three macronutrients and of course all the micronutrients, minerals, etc, etc. The three macronutrients would be carbs, fats and proteins. Some people do thrive on a ketogenic diet where they eat only fats and proteins. Nevertheless, especially in a hot environment like the desert, you do not want to abstain from carbohydrates, which are, like the name says already, hydrating to you, of course. However, when you eat cooked starches, cooked grains, those carbohydrates can be very dehydrating and like that you can't really fuel your body optimally. It is much better to eat hydrating fruits. And yes, cucumbers are fruits as well. Watermelons, needless to say, are fruits too. Like this, you can eat your water. Like that, you can hydrate yourself whilst eating, get the minerals in, the electrolytes that we can find in certain plants. And the true nutrition, nevertheless, comes from the meats and milks. I have to say that even from this modern day standard, this diet is absolutely healthy for you. Alright guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Thank you so much to my Patreons that keep on supporting this channel. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.